So why do we have then so many books of people who call themselves enlightened, enlightened and want to help us to wake up? Well, Renate, if I was asking you that question in an interview, that's exactly what I would say to you. <laughs> Why indeed? But what we're forgetting, sort of, mm -hmm. is... I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, because that sounds callous and unjoyful. But all there is is this. It's, it's so full that everything can go on. Those books can go on. And it's just this thing, this vastness, doing its own thing. Right. So, I mean, who cares if people write books? I don't mean to be rude there. Yes. Um, and I'm a great one for helping people mm -hmm. in, in my life, but I would never, never presume to say that I could help someone become enlightened because I can't. Because the Catherine thing that used to do whatever it did yeah. is, a, for want of a better word, a mind-body organism. I borrowed that from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it sees itself sort of being in time and in space. And that Catherine thing cannot, cannot understand with the mind that vastness, that fullness and that emptiness. It just can't do it. And now you're going to ask me what enlightenment is and I can't tell you. <laughs> um. No, I actually wanted, I read, <laughs> I, I, I read an interesting sentence in one of, of the books I read lately, mm. which says, um, a, stink, a stinker before enlightenment is an enlightened stinker afterwards. So what you're basically saying, there is, I mean, and as we spoke before, you, you were telling me you still can get angry and you still, if... If you go down the road with your bike and, and the car is cutting you, you, you show him your finger or whatever you <laughs> said. What, what you say is exactly what the sentence says. Enlightenment, you can be enlightenment, enlightened, but your personality wouldn't change or wouldn't be affected from the part in you which is enlightened. Is that true? It's, I find that very mysterious. I really mm -hmm. do. And I can see you're puzzled by it as well. It is odd because you'd think that if the self falls away, yes. that there would be some sort of so-called perfection. But then you think, well, what is perfection in terms of this vastness, mm -hmm. of this fullness that is also empty, this truly unconditional love, yes. which the mind cannot possibly attain what is perfect and who really is some mind body organism to say that everything isn't perfect just as it is except I wouldn't use the word perfect because I think it's misleading mm -hmm. so I've struggled with that with stinkers liberated stinkers yes. but why should why should it change what would your idea be of someone who was liberated and was just perfect in their behaviour. What would your idea be? How would they behave? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting question. How would they behave? Uh, they would, you know, I have an idea how they shouldn't behave. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I met several teachers mm. and as we know, most of these enlightened teachers, they all have a problem with sex, with money. I mean, they sleep with their disciples, they have problems with money, and they have problems with power. Now, I believe um, if somebody is in this space of enlightenment and love, that he couldn't do that. Yeah, I have a problem with that too. It's really tacky, in my view. Yeah. Um, first of all, are they liberated, or whatever word we're going to use? I yeah. mean, who knows? Right. What I've always found interesting, that one so-called liberated person can't tell if someone else is, which surprised me. Yes. Can um, you? Can you see this, if somebody's no. liberated? No. No. <laughs> I think I can sometimes tell if they're not. <laughs> <laughs> But can people see 
that you are liberated? No. No, definitely not. Isn't it in your behavior, the way you behave to certain things? No, I don't not think so. Not getting involved uh, uh, in, in emotions or in pain or in disasters, but being more detached because you know who you are. And now I, know, I hear you saying there isn't anybody <laughs> there who knows it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be obvious. Well, you could ask my husband. Yes. And he would probably say it isn't obvious. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a mystery to me. I'm not going to fall into the trap of thinking I've got the answers. Heaven knows why it is, but stuff still goes on. Yeah. And as I said earlier, some things have felt worse or more keenly than before. And it is a mystery to me. Yeah. So I could, I could behave very badly. I mean, I don't think I do because I, despite liberation, rather than because of it, I've got sort of values, standards, boundaries, all those sorts of things. So how does liberation feel for you? Oh. Well, how, how is it? How, how can you describe the space? I mean, you said it's fast and it's full and it's empty. And it's paradoxical. It's paradoxical. How can I describe it? Well, why, why are we so compelled to find this space if nothing is changing listening to you? What, what is this in us? Well, I'm not exactly going to answer your question. I'm going to answer it in a sideways way because what I forgot to say was that I'm no longer seeking. There is no seeking. Yeah. There's not that constant worry about, am I doing the right thing? Have I learnt enough mantras? Have I been to the right teacher? If I sit up straighter, will I become enlightened? If I stop having sex, my kundalini will rise and then I'll be enlightened. Mm -hmm. Should I have sex at all? Mm -hmm. Is chocolate okay? Mm -hmm. All gone. Now that's well worth it. Yeah. 